Ghani tribe. I'm like so proud of myself. It's not seven on the dot, but it is only 7.03. And so this is definitely a huge win for me. Typically, I don't know how I'm late to virtual world. It's a freaking shame. But I'm so happy. Like I actually made it on time, right? Round of applause for Angie. She did an amazing job. I'm super proud of myself. If you don't brag on yourself, then who will? Um, so let's get this thing started. If you are tuning in, go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know that you're here. Give me a wave. Give me a hello. Um, but like I said, right, I am so proud of myself. I actually arrived on time, technically on time, right? Three minutes late, but uh, what's the saying? Like better late than never, even though I wasn't as late as I usually am. I'm so proud of myself. It's a rainy day. Um, as you guys see in the back, right, let me see, shelves are empty, empty shelves are everything. There's a necklace, let me see, there's a necklace empty up there, there's some backpacks missing, there's some purses gone, so I am definitely in the mood to celebrate. So yep, definitely drop a comment, let me know that you're here. Give me a big, huge Habari Ghani. So yes, so let's dive into tonight's topics, or I guess like for those that are tuning in on other platforms, I should definitely give like a soft intro. So good evening, everyone. My name is Angie DeGante. As you see at the bottom, I am the owner of Accent Styles Boutique, where a percentage of every single cell goes to sending kids in Kenya to school. And so Accent Styles is basically built off humanitarian work. Yes, we love fashion. Yes, we love culture. Yes, we love all of the different textures and the sexy outfits and the ball gowns. But more importantly, we love to give back. So that is the sole focus, the sole heart of Accent Styles Boutique. Um, if you guys want to follow me on other platforms that you happen to not be tuning in on right now, you can definitely find me on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, all under Accent Styles Boutique. If you would like to dive a bit more into my personal life, right? You wanna see like my favorite restaurants or what I'm doing on the weekend, definitely go ahead and subscribe to Angie DeGante on YouTube. And if you see anything fabulous that sticks out, like the head wrap, like the earrings I'm wearing, some of the accessories in the background, then go ahead, right? And shop, go to www.accentstylesboutique and check it out. Um, even if you're just browsing, right, check it out, see if you like anything. There's always 20% off for first-time shoppers. I try to hook y'all up as much as possible. So definitely, definitely check it out, right? So tonight, without further ado, because I have been rambling for about three minutes, go ahead, don't forget tribe, definitely drop a hello in the comments or a habari gani. Let me know how you guys are doing. Let me know how you guys are spending your evening. But before we dive into the topics, you guys know the drill. Let me know how you are winding down. How are you relaxing tonight? How are you making it through, I guess, like hump day through the midweek? Are you sipping on wine? Are you drinking tea? Are you watching a movie? What are you doing? How are you relaxing? So as you guys can see, I have this big old Wawa cup. Um, no, it's not coffee from Wawa. No, it's not water. This is definitely wine, but I am all out of cups at the boutique. Saturday's sip and shop kind of cleaned me out when it came to sipping and shopping, which was a beautiful thing, but I really miss my cups. I just happen to have this cup in the office. Um, as strange as that sounds, I don't, I don't really know if it's clean or dirty. <laughs> I shouldn't even say that out loud. I shouldn't even say it on live, but yeah. Definitely don't know, but found the cup. I trust that since it's in my office or was in my office that it's mine. And so, yes, I am drinking my wine out of a Wawa cup. Okay, so tonight's topics, we are talking about how to promote your small business. I'm going to give you guys two tips about uh, what are my favorite tips to promote my business. We're going to talk about a fun African proverb, and then we are going to dive in. How do you properly solo travel? 
or how do I properly solo travel? And so without further ado, you guys are really shy tonight, but go, you guys, I see that you guys are tuning in. I can see the numbers in the corner. I know that you're there. I know that you're supporting. Oh, I see some comments over there. Hello, Christina. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for saying hello, right? I love hellos. You guys don't be shy. Um, so tonight it's rainy, as you guys can hear. And so I have my head wrapped to protect it. I have a really big event tomorrow. It's actually a, uh, what's the proper name for it? It's actually a fashion show. There's a fashion show at 7th and Grove. And so I am protecting my hair. I want to make sure that I am absolutely fly for Dearly Beloved. Make sure that you guys grab your tickets. Make sure that you guys check it out. Hello. Hey, girl. Hey. Um. So yeah, if you guys don't have tickets yet, definitely try to grab a ticket. If you can't grab a ticket, then definitely check out the vlog tomorrow so you guys can see how it went. Um, but without further ado, right, let's talk about how I prefer to promote my business. And so I prefer to promote my business organically with organic connections. And I know that you guys see like in the parentheses, no networking events. And while this might be like a bit controversial or people may not necessarily agree or it may be the only strategy that many people know, I do not like networking events. And it's not because I'm shy. It's not because I'm an introvert. I'm very much extroverted. I very much love to talk to people. Um, I very much love to tell people about my business. But I think that is pretty much exactly what it is. I think people typically attend networking events not necessarily to connect not necessarily to learn about other people's business, but I think they come for the selfish motive of sharing their business only. And so when it comes to that, I don't encourage promoting your business at networking events. And so if you guys love networking events, go ahead, drop in the comments, let me know you love networking events or you've had success with networking events, or even let me know if you haven't had success with networking events. It's just something that I personally do not like. Um, I do attend them sometimes. I do go to them sometimes. They can be a lot of fun, but like I stated, they are very biased. They're typically leaning towards the person that is promoting their business. And so their ears aren't always open to learning about someone's coffee business or learning about someone's taxi service. Typically, it's strictly only to promote their business. And yeah, so it isn't very memorable when you go home and you have a Rolodex of 50 business cards. So womp. So you guys are saying, Angie, if you don't agree with networking events, how do you make organic connections? And so let me drop a gem for you guys. The way that I make organic connections are one, you know, like Wind Down Wednesday, typically talking to you beautiful people and getting to know you guys better. That is an organic connection. I'm not selling anything. I'm not marketing anything. I'm strictly making a connection with people. Uh, one of the other ways, right, in case you're camera shy, that I make organic connections is shopping small. So I'm off on Monday and Tuesday. Typically, other small businesses are closed on Monday as well. And so either on Tuesday, a Sunday, or Wednesday morning before I go into work, I try to shop small. So I give myself a budget. It could be something as little as $20 or $5. It could be much as $200, right? Just depends on what my personal pockets are looking like. And so I see someone says, let's see, I love networking events to meet people. I don't get very nervous at times to talk about my business. Yeah, you don't get very nervous. I, I know a lot of people that don't, but I think it is like lopsided. Like you, you, I love them for meeting people, but it isn't necessarily always the best point of contact for me to learn about someone else's business because strictly like I go to pass out my business card to tell people about my business um she said but I am great at talking to people I agree I've seen some of your lives I definitely think that you can make great organic connections and so yeah I think um like I was saying a way to create organic connections is shopping small going out of your way to stop into a small business shop or going out of your way to personally DM a small business owner and inboxing them, letting them know like, hey, I've seen your marketing, you're doing a great job, or hey, I've seen your post, 
I'm really looking forward to buying that candle and actually following up, going in to buy that candle, right? Going in to meet that owner. I think organic connections will always out trump networking events. Um, so on to promo tip number two, consistency, right? Consistency gets a heart because consistency to me is everything, right? Every single thing comes from consistency. That means like consistently making those organic connections, consistently posting your business, consistently marketing, consistent, consistently, um, what's the word? Consistently creating a bomb product. Like you can't make an amazing product one week and make a trash product the following week. Um, and I know we're human, so sometimes we have like bad weeks or great weeks or amazing weeks. So making sure that every time someone enters your store, they don't necessarily feel your emotions. They just feel an amazing product. They feel an amazing feeling about your brand. They feel like it's clean. So consistency overall, consistency across the board. You don't want to be that business owner that people deem as fickle, as moody. Um, you don't want to be that business owner where you have a restaurant and they're like, sometimes the food is good, sometimes the food is salty. You know, you want to be consistently the best that you can be. And so, yeah. Right? So we talked about ways we're promoting our business and the two tips were, to me, right? No networking events and the other one was consistency. And so, like I said, I promised you guys a fun proverb. So here it is. If anyone makes you laugh, it is not always because they love you. And so typically I say it's an African proverb, but shout out to Kenyan because this one is a Kenyan proverb. And I think that it's lots of fun. So I'm going to sip on my wine a bit. I'm going to give you guys about 20 seconds to let me know personally what you think this means. And then I will dissect it myself. Oh, it's raining. I really think I'm going to be stuck in here for a minute. I'm just going to have to like sip on this wine and enjoy the rain. I guess I'm I guess I'm stuck here for a little bit. Okay, so let's break down the first half. The first half, if anyone makes you laugh. And so I think the word laugh can be interchangeable with so many things. Um so if someone makes you happy, if someone makes you feel sexy, if someone I see something in the chat right? A distraction. So yes. So it's like, if someone, where is it? So it says, if someone makes you laugh, it's not always because they love you. And so that's exactly what I get from it. So if someone makes you feel beautiful, if someone gives you advice, it is not always because they love you. So when it says it's not always because they love you, it's basically challenging you to question their motive, I think. Like, if this person takes me on dates, it does not mean they want to be my boyfriend. <laughs> and I know that sounds crazy, and I know that sounds harsh, but in 2022, I'm sure that you guys can definitely relate. So, if he makes me laugh, it's not because he loves me. Or if someone gives me advice, it's not because they want to see me do well. So, I think this one, it seems very cute, it seems very light, but it's definitely a heavy proverb. If anyone makes you laugh, it is not because they love you. So definitely keep your head on a swivel. So let's dive into topic number three. We are definitely, the rain is like lightening up and I want to give you guys some time for Q&A. And so I am kind of breezing through this topic or these topics, but definitely feel free to interject, ask some questions. I'll definitely always backpedal and answer what I can. And so... Let's dive into how to properly solo travel. I feel like people ask me this all the time. They're like, Angie, I see you in Kenya. I see you in Mexico. I see you in Turkey. I see you traveling all these places by yourself. How do you do it successfully? And so while I'm not willing to give up all of my tips for free on YouTube or on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, I will definitely give you guys like two of my faves. And so one of the tips is, Never tell people you're traveling alone. And you guys are probably thinking like, who in their right mind would tell people 
they're traveling alone? Or how does this conversation even come up? And so I think people do it very innocently without even thinking twice. People are like, you know, they meet people at the bar or at the club or in their hotel building. And people are like, how are you enjoying Turkey? Or how are you enjoying New York? And people usually use that opportunity to say like, I'm here by myself or I'm just exploring the place alone. Womp, womp, womp. Like that is definitely a safety hazard. So for me, right, I love a good lie. I love a good story. So for me, when I'm traveling solo, I typically always tell people that my husband is waiting for me upstairs or my husband and I are traveling and exploring this country and he's tired. So he decided to stay home. And so that gives me like, the lead way to let them know that I'm open to exploring other adventures with you guys or with um, the group or with this new couple. But it leaves them under the impression that if I go missing or if I do not come back or if I'm out too long, that someone will be looking for me. And so I never, ever tell people I'm alone. I always let them know that I have some big, brolic, sexy man waiting for me at my hotel and that I only have about an hour or two hours before I have to get back or before I have to check in. Um, I will set alarms. I will definitely let them go off like someone is calling me. And you guys probably think all of this is so extreme, but people definitely get kidnapped on uh, solo travels, right? It's just, I love a good story. I love a good story. Like, give me an opportunity to create a story and I will definitely create one. And so, yeah, I let them know. Um My husband is upstairs, right? This husband that I do not have, he is upstairs. He is waiting for me. This man that is not even in the room, he is waiting for me. He's waiting to kiss me and love me and all these things. But yeah, never let them know that you're traveling alone. Tip number two. Definitely travel with a door lock. So they have these door locks that are Amazon. They're called travel door locks. And you can attach them to your Airbnb door. You can attach them to your hotel room door. Hell, if you live at home in your city and you feel like your door is not secure enough, you can definitely put a travel door lock on your door at home. So it's basically an insurance that someone cannot kick your door in. They cannot knock your door open. Um, They said, let's see, this is very necessary, though, because people fish for info all the time. Yes. People definitely fish for info all the time in reference to like, why are you there? Or if you're there alone. So yeah, definitely, right? Let's say you have given someone wind that you don't have this big, brolic, sexy man waiting for you or that you are traveling alone. I feel like the travel door lock is that second security. Now, within your room, you can have additional security. You can have mace. um, You can have a taser. You can have a lipstick knife. All of these things are available on Amazon. You don't need a license for any of these additional things to keep you safe. Um, But definitely, definitely make sure that you have something that makes you feel secure. That way you can sleep with both eyes closed at night. You don't have to fear and ask like, you know, like, am I safe or I'm nervous? What if someone else has the key lock? And I know this might sound extreme, but I don't even trust like, the hotel maintenance, like people that are cleaning the hotel or the bartender downstairs that has kind of memorized your movements or noticed that, you know, you come down alone, you wake up alone, you breakfast alone. Like you never know who's watching you in a foreign country, especially as a woman and especially as a solo traveler. So definitely have your travel door lock. Definitely have a knife. Definitely don't tell people that you are traveling alone. And because I feel so generous, right, I'm going to drop a third gem for you guys. Use Google Maps with earbuds. So I'm not sure what the things are called that go in your ears. Um, I call them earbuds. I think headphones. So make sure, like, you use your Google Map with headphones. They could be AirPods. They could be, you know, like earbuds, any type of thing that goes into your ear. And why do I say that? Because when you are looking for the place that you'd like to try, like if it's a new restaurant or if it's a hotel or whatever you are looking for, no one has to know that you're lost. Like you can walk around. It can look like you have music in your ears. It can look like you're listening to a song or you're talking to someone. But no one will ever know that you're using your maps to find your location. 
Another benefit about Google Maps is that it works offline. So you don't need internet service for your Google Maps. Once you've mapped out your location, at least once when you were connected to Wi-Fi, you can always go back into Google Maps and hit the direction and it will play in your ear with or without internet service. Okay? Okay. So that pretty much like sums up all the topics that I planned on talking about, but I did want to address the Kenya 2023 tour. I know that everyone has been super curious about this tour. They want to know the cause. They want to know the dates. They want to know, do they need all their money up front? And the answer is, right? The answer is you do not have to have all of your money up front. There's definitely payment plans available. Hey girl, hey. Thank you for that awesome playlist, right? She's giving me an awesome playlist. Um, but let's go back to the Kenya 2023 details. I've seen someone do their eyes, right? They want more details. And so yes, payment plans are available. You need $300 to secure your space. That's it, that's all. The rest of your payments can be broken down into installments. And so, I know people are like, well, how many days is it? It's nine days. It's all inclusive. We have four signature drinks at our villa where you can turn up, right? Everything's included. You can turn up from night to the next morning or from morning with your mimosas at breakfast to night, right? As much as you want. There's endless food. There's endless drinks. It is an endless good time. I know that a lot of people tuning in right now, like Christina and a few other people, they attended past tours and they had an amazing time. And so, yeah, it is nine days. I believe the dates are July 27 to August 8th, something like that. Something like right before school starts. So you have no excuse. You don't have to worry about your little one um, being in school or you not being able to watch after the little one. School hasn't started yet. So you can drop them off to grandma, to grandpa, to the neighbor, to their dad, to their mom. Right? You can you can definitely drop them off somewhere. And so it is nine days of fun. We go to the Elephant Orphanage. We go to the Giraffe Center. We visit five cities, two countries, Tanzania and Kenya. We do the Great Migration where you can see all of the animals cross and migrate in and out of Kenya. We go to Mombasa where we have a beach day and we lay on the white sand and we ride camels and we have the freshest seafood ever right someone just said let me grab my passport definitely grab your passport if you need assistance with that i can definitely follow up with the link to help you uh feel more secure about how you should apply for your passport it's really an easy process it's only 150 dollars, and so i think right now because of COVID, it takes two months or three months it takes a bit longer than usual but it will definitely be here before 2023. Um, but it is an amazing time at night, right? In the nightlife, you can choose to stay home and sleep, but you don't have to stay home and sleep. I have business hours while I'm on the tour. So from 8 a.m. to like 8 p.m., I am definitely your tour guide, Angie, or Angie the tour guide. But once 8 p.m. passes, right, from 10 p.m. to like 6 a.m., like Angie is turning up, Angie's having a fun time. Angie is definitely not your travel agent. Angie is like your home girl. So it is definitely, definitely a lot, a lot of fun. So Christina said that she got her passport in four weeks. Was this pre-COVID or after COVID, during COVID? When did it take the four weeks? Just out of curiosity. What? Why makes me fine? Cheers to that, right? So I'm going to take a sip. Christina said last month. No, I, I guess like, is it because you changed your last name? Because you definitely had a passport already because you went to Kenya. Um, but yes, nine days of fun. Kenya 2023. I am only accepting 35 people. And so you guys are probably like, Angie, 35 people. That's a huge number, but it is not. This year in August, I am taking about 45 people. So um i think originally the list was at 60 and then because people didn't have their passports or it was taking longer than usual they kind of like dropped off but we have a solid 
45 people that are going on this tour. And so um, I wanted to make it a bit more intimate. I wanted to scale back. And so, yes, I wanted to scale back and give people the opportunity to actually hang out with me and actually get to see the luxury and local side of Nairobi. And so we have days where we do in the day of the life of a local, where we go to local food markets, we compare them to other, you know, larger brand grocery stores. So we compare like how much is an orange on the street versus how much is an orange at the grocery store. Or we use public transport, we cook local dishes in the evening. There is all types of activities where you can do a pottery class, you can do a Swahili class, you can do a beading class. Of course, all of this takes place before club time. But it is definitely an amazing time. So if you would like like more information about how you can secure your spot or how you can send your $300, definitely comment your email address or inbox me your email address if it's not something that you want um, everyone to see. I really feel like I'm promoting Wawa, like I'm doing a Wawa ad and I am not. Definitely not promoting Wawa. Wawa has done nothing for me. Um, so hello, Valerie. Happy Wind Down Wednesday. Thank you for tuning in. Okay, I'll inbox mine. Definitely inbox it to me. I'm not sure if I still have it. You know, the list the list gets lost in the sauce sometime, but definitely inbox me your email address. I believe you've already been to Kenya, but I would love to show you Kenya through my lens. I would love for you to see both uh, the luxury and local side of it. So yes, honey, we go to local wineries. We go to Rift Valley. We go and we meet actual Maasai people and their original uh, land. So you can see their huts. You can see how they eat. They live without electricity. They don't have running water. They have a very, very um, organic lifestyle. So I would say it's a very close to nature lifestyle. It's a very traditional lifestyle. Um, the Maasai's, if they do not grow it, they do not eat it. If they do not make it, they do not wear it. Um, they don't have cell phones. They kind of don't use public transportation or motives of cars. And so seeing how they live is absolutely phenomenal. Like to see people that are still living in 2022 like that. And so if you guys have any questions, right, feel free to ask them. I know we talked about promoting our business. We talked about solo travel. We talked about the African proverb. And now we have talked about Kenya 2023. And I would love to hear like from you guys, like what are you guys up to? What do you want to hear more about? I am like open ears. I'm kind of captivated here because <laughs> it's raining really, really hard. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm curious. What would you guys like to hear more of? Every time I look and I see like that the shelves are empty, I can't help but get excited. Today was a beautiful Wednesday. Definitely had um, a lot of shoppers, um, particularly from people that tune in to Wind Down Wednesday. So thank you guys for popping in, showing support. Um, Absolutely love you guys. Love you guys wholeheartedly. You don't have to do it, but you do it. So great question. What shots are required? You do not need the COVID vaccine. I know that's a huge one for everyone. You do not need the COVID vaccine. You, why am I using the one nail that's broken? But at any rate, you do not need the COVID vaccine. Most of the shots you need, um, most of the shots that you need are already shots that you have, like meningococcal, typhoid, um, tetanus. These are all shots that you already have. I know that they recommend getting the yellow fever vaccine if you would like to go to if you would like to go to Tanzania, but I don't believe that it's mandatory. So it isn't something that you're obligated to get. So I want to say no shots are mandatory, but they are highly encouraged. The one shot on the entire list that I would say to get would be the, would be to be yellow fever. Yeah, just to be secure. I know that, you know, most doctor's offices in the US will encourage you to get the malaria tab. If you have insurance that will cover that, 
definitely, definitely get the malaria pills or malaria tabs, however you prefer to call them. Um, but for me, I know for a fact that they're cheaper in Nairobi. And so I would buy my malaria tabs once I got to Kenya. I know stateside it might be like two or three hundred dollars. And I'm just like, guy, who has money like that? Like after you pay for a tour, after you pay for your flight, like who has money for tabs? And they're very important. But I think the largest thing is there is no malaria in Nairobi. Now, once you exit outside of Nairobi, you can definitely experience, um, you know, mosquito bites. So I, for those of you that don't know what malaria is, malaria is like West Nile virus. It's something that basically comes from mosquito bites. And so there is no malaria in Nairobi, but we will be visiting five cities outside of Nairobi. And so to have precaution or to be safe, I would definitely encourage malaria tabs either purchased in the U.S. or in Nairobi. And I would encourage the yellow fever, but I wouldn't encourage anything outside of that. Everything else is just a bonus, but it's not mandatory. I see a message that said, I came by earlier at Artesia. So I'm not sure if this person is commenting to Artesia or I'm not sure if it's Artesia actually commenting, but I was here today. Like I might have, you know, run to the restroom and, you know, locked my door because unfortunately, right, I don't have a restroom in my in my building. Like, inshallah, like I'm hoping, right, I have a new building and I have a new restroom and I have all of the amenities that I would like to have in my boutique. So that's my prayer from my mouth to God's ears. I hope she's listening. That is what I want, a bathroom in my location. And so, yeah, if you ever pop in and I'm not here, definitely call the number on the door. It always says, like, call me. So reach out, send me a text, send me a call. I'm always here Wednesday through Saturday from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. How much are the tabs in Nairobi? Okay. Um, I'm not sure how much each tab is, but I would say, like, for a week or two, less than less than $50. So the, the tabs aren't very expensive. Um... Because I guess malaria is something that's very common in Kenya, like they would cost the way a Tylenol would cost or the way Advil would cost because it's like supply and demand. Of course, in the U.S., malaria is a foreign concept. They have to import this pill. They have to recreate it. They have to generate it here in these U.S. factories. So um, it is a bit expensive here, at least to me, unless you have insurance uh, that will cover international things. But definitely would grab the tabs in Nairobi. That's my best recommendation. I'm super frugal, right? I'm super duper frugal. So definitely. Hello, Candy Lo. How are you? You guys, if you're tuning in and you see Candy Lo's, you know, name appearing here, definitely give her a follow. She is the creator of the Black Business Bus Tour where that bus goes around, not just during tour times, but on the regular and they support small black businesses in Tampa Bay and all over. So definitely check out her page if you're a small business owner. Give her a shout. Um, sometimes she allows you to promote on her business page. So definitely a beautiful organization. Thank you for tuning in, Candy. Do you get it at a pharmacy there? So this is the craziest thing, right? You can definitely get it at a pharmacy. You can get anything at a pharmacy. We actually call pharmacies chemist. And so um, that's the difference. We call it a chemist, but you can definitely get the medicine there. But you can also get them like at corner stores and other places. Like they literally sell it. They literally sell the malaria tabs like Tylenols. So you can go into like your local grocery store. You can. Thank you so much. I love the support. Thank you so much. So you can definitely go into like any grocery store, any area and grab what you need. Um, within the tour, right, we do have a group on Facebook where you can join the Kenya 2023 group if you are interested and you can find out, um, you know, not the itinerary. You don't get the full itinerary until you have paid off your tour, but you get a random gist of it, like for the, you know, majority of what we'll be doing. But for those more intricate and personal experiences, I definitely keep those like a bit secretive to protect the intellectual property of the tour. Um, but 
yes, it's an amazing tour. You definitely get to explore. I give you guys a checkoff list of what I think you may personally need as far as, um, what is the word for it? As far as anti-theft backpacks, that's the name. As far as anti-theft backpacks, as far as um, the life straw, which is a straw that purifies your water when you're drinking it, right? You don't have to worry about if the water is uh, contaminated or if it's bottled or if it's been purified. You don't you don't have to second guess any of those things when you have the purified bottle or the life straw. Um, so I give you guys a checkoff list of things that I personally own and things that have personally made my travel experience easy when I'm in Nairobi or my life experience easy while I was in Nairobi. I have lived in Nairobi over seven years. And so I'm well acquainted with the culture, well acquainted on the prices, um, down to the shilling, right? Down to the cent. Like, nope. I know, right? I know, I know, I know exactly what you would need, exactly what um, you would need to pack with you, what would be a waste, what would be too expensive, um, what would be in a phenomenal deal as far as clothing and as far as like purchasing property. I'm not saying that I am a Nairobi guru, but I think one of the many things that set me apart from most people that take you to Africa is that I don't take you to Africa because I've toured the place. I take you to Africa because I've lived there, because I've experienced it, because I go there every other month, right? <laughs> because, right? Because I experience the place often. And I know like you guys see the photos up here of the kids from my orphanage. I, I have them all over the store. Like I keep them close to me. And so some of the kids are like, auntie, like, are you sure that America is far? And I'm like, America is so far and America is so expensive. They're like, but you're here all the time. And I'm like, God is good. God is great. Like you see me often because God is good. It's not because it's close. It's because God is good. Um, so yeah, I definitely think that uh, enhances your experience while you're there. We do like a lot of local activities, but we definitely have our luxurious experiences we do rooftop bars. We do five-star restaurants. We definitely have um, a tour bus that's a seed, and we have live music at the house in the evening, and we have a private chef, and we live in a villa with maids. And so it is definitely, right? It is definitely a beautiful experience. And so I don't know if I have anyone that's tuning in, but if you guys have ever been to Kenya or even Africa as an entirety, definitely let me know which country you visited. Let me know if you've visited Africa or if you're just curious about visiting Africa. I see that I have like a lot of people that are interested in coming home. They're interested in visiting East Africa, but I would love to hear, you know, if you've already been there or if you are just super curious about it. I know one of the largest things is that there's a misconception that Africa is poor. People really think that Africa is poor and sometimes it like shocks me because I feel like I have had a better life on the continent than I've had in the US. And so um, I don't think it's poor. It is definitely the country that exports everything and imports nothing, right? Like think about that, the country that exports everything and imports nothing. They have their own oil, they have their own corn, they have um, their own water, they are innovative, they have diamonds, they have minerals, they have resources, they have their own currency, right? I have been to other countries that don't have their own currency. Like, as much as I love Antigua, like I've been to the Caribbean and they use the Eastern Caribbean dollar and it has like the queen on it, Queen Elizabeth. And I'm like, who's, whose dollar is this? Like. When I'm in Africa, like everyone has their own currency and it has black faces, like black presidents, it has animals, it has something that reflects the country. But um, that tells you how powerful they are to have like their own dollar with melanated faces. And so Willie said he's very curious, right? Definitely inbox me your, your email address so you can get the details. I think that it would be a wonderful place to visit. Definitely inbox me if you aren't comfortable commenting your email address. Definitely, um, definitely get that to me. So you guys know why Willie's name is up. Definitely click in the comments, check out his page. 
He has beautiful poetry books. He is one of the baddest poets that I know. So definitely check him out. I feel like I know a, a few great phenomenal uh, poets in the Tampa Bay area. And he is definitely, definitely one of them. And so, yeah, definitely inquire about the tour. It is going to be amazing, to say the least. Um, I know people, some people have gone on the tour twice. And I'm like, you've already experienced Kenya. Why would you want to come back on the tour specifically with me again? And they're like, every tour is different. Um, every tour has its own culture and its own flair. We do a lot of the same activities. But definitely, if there's new attractions or new excursions, we definitely try those. Um, and it's just a vibe. Like, it is just a vibe. I know that I mentioned poetry earlier, right? You're so welcome for that. We definitely have a poetry night at the house, right? And you guys are probably thinking like, what? Like, Kenya has open mic night? Yes, we have open mic night. Um, but instead of venturing out, like, to an open mic night, I bring some of the best poets to us. So we have poetry and live music about two out of the nine nights that we're there. And so if you're not like me, you don't want to go out and you don't want to party, right? You don't want to drink. You don't want to turn up in somebody's club. Like you you don't want to participate in that wahala. Then you can definitely stay home and have your own vibe, have unlimited drinks, enjoy the live music, and just like breathe. Like uh, definitely sit and reflect on the fact that you have come home. And so I think that's like the most beautiful part. Um, returning Home. Everything about the place when I get there feels very organic. It feels right. I don't think I have ever landed in Kenya without shedding a tear. Um, the emotional pull and the gravity that I feel once I land and once I get to the continent is surreal. Um, being someone that is a part of like the diaspora, it just feels very different. I feel that I have accomplished so much. And I feel that I um, kind of do, or I kind of am like my ancestors' wildest dreams to be able to fluctuate back and forth from um, the U.S. to the continent, back and forth. I'm like, this is what, this is what I was created to do. And so I'm very grateful, right, that I that I have that opportunity, that I can afford that opportunity, not only for myself but to show others. And so the entire tour, right, because. I don't play those games, right, where I create different prices for different people. That's not me. And so the entire tour for anybody, for you, your mama, your grandmama, my grandmama, right? <laughs> the entire tour for nine days is 3800 And so that covers your food. That covers your, hello, beautiful. So that covers your food. That covers your accommodations. That covers your entries into all of the parks. That covers uh, some of our, our food when we're out at different restaurants. It covers practically everything. Flights typically during that time of year are 700 round trip. If you book at least six months in advance, there's also payment plans for your flight, right? So it's definitely, I think, an affordable trip. I have seen other people's tours. I'm not sure if Charlene is still tuning in, but... Um, I mean, she's been to Kenya. So I definitely think that's affordable for almost 10 days, um, nine entire nights to cover your accommodations and your food and your PCR test and your pickup from the airport and your drop off back to the airport and your maid service and the private chefs and the whole nine yards. I'm what? I'm definitely, I love this. Like I'm getting messages where people are interested in the tour. And I know that a bit of you guys are shy you do not, I repeat, you do not have to comment your your email address on the live if you do not feel comfortable, but you can definitely drop it in the comments. And so if you're tuning in, I know a lot of you guys are like, well, you know, how did Angie start Accent Styles Boutique? How did she start giving tours? How did she get into like the full on African lifestyle? And it's definitely something that I love sharing. In fact, last week I shared how I left my job or left my career and decided to do full-time entrepreneurship, right? I talked about it. I shared about it. So 
as much as I would love to dive into that, because something tells me that you guys are curious, um, I'd say like go to YouTube or go to my my Facebook page or my any of those pages and like rewatch the video, like check out the video. It was an amazing wind down Wednesday night. And I talked about how I opened my beautiful boutique and how I became a lover of all things African. Um, and just basically like how my career uh, ventured out, how I, you know, unraveled into what I am doing today. And so I just want you guys to know that what I am doing today, none of it is possible without each and every one of you guys. Like I'm so, so appreciative. I appreciate you guys. You don't have to shop at Accent Styles Boutique to contribute to my success. Um, viewing is important. Sharing the statuses are important. Liking the photos are important. All of those things are like a way to support. You don't always have to support me financially. Um, and I and I understand that. And I definitely, definitely appreciate it. Someone said, we'll get Angie to talk on the radio Tuesday, 10 a.m. at hawkradio.primestream. Dot com. Something tells me that's Articia because she has a radio show. But yes, definitely. I would I would absolutely love to talk on your radio show. Um, but yes, yeah, support is free. So definitely liking, sharing, subscribing to my channel is a huge support. Um, but I'm going to jump off of this live because I see that the rain has stopped. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, my name is Angie Bigante. I'm the owner of Accent Styles Boutique where I give a percentage of every sale to the little ones in Kenya. Um, if you would like to follow me on Facebook, on TikTok, on Instagram, you can do so under Accent Styles Boutique. And if you would like to dive into all of my personal life, right? You want to see me in Kenya. You want to see me in Miami. You want to see me in Turkey. Definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm about 49 people away from uh, monetizing my page. If you have not followed, definitely Definitely follow, share it with a friend, share it with a family member. Let them know, right? There's no reason why I'm not monetized yet. There's like 5,000 of you guys that are on my Facebook page and like 20,000 of you guys that are on TikTok. So I'm pretty sure collectively, right? When we work together, we can definitely cohort like 49 people to subscribe, right? So that's your assignment. If you are tuning in tonight and you are a first time shopper at Accent Styles Boutique, then you definitely get 20% off. So definitely check out the website, check out the page. Tonight was so amazing talking to you guys about how to promote our business, how to solo travel, uh, the Kenya 2022 tour, and my favorite African proverb, or at least one of them. So thank you guys for tuning in. Peace, love, and lots and lots of African culture. Naku Panda, guys. I love you, and I will see you guys next.